Oh, this is worksheet 9.4. We're graphing some parabolas. So the directions say calculate the vertex of each function. And that's actually going to be our first step since you'll notice these are all in standard form. So before we calculate our vertex, it won't hurt to identify your a, b, and c values. That's your coefficients of x squared, your coefficient of x, and your constant. So a is 1 because there's an invisible 1 right there, b is 8, and c is 15. Because my leading coefficient, this 1, is positive, I'm thinking that this is going to be opening upward. All right, let's go after the vertex. So to calculate the x value of the vertex, we're going to take the opposite of b divided by 2a. So that's going to be negative 8 divided by 2 times 1. Oops, that looks like 0.1, 2 times 1 which equals negative 4. So now to figure out our y value of the vertex, we'll make a table. And this x value of the vertex is going to be the central, the center location of our column. So I'm going to put negative 4 here with some room above and room below. So how we find our y value of our vertex coordinate is plug our x value in for x in the function. So we'll go negative 4 in parentheses. When we substitute, we put parentheses around what we're plugging in, plus 8 times negative 4 plus 15. And in your calculator, use those parentheses. If you don't, you'll notice that on here you get a different answer. You should be getting negative 1. So right now I know that the bottom of this smiley face, the vertex, is at negative 4, negative 1. Check out your scaling here. Be careful. So that would be right there. And now, folks, we're going to locate at least two points to the left and the right of the vertex. Why we put our vertex x value in the middle is to go to the left, we'd, be, we'd go negative 5 and negative 6. And to go to the right, we'd go negative 3 and negative 2. So negative 4 will be the middle number out of these. And now, folks, we're going to use this function again. You don't need to rewrite it in these spots like we used to in the past. Just go to your calculator history where you just typed this in in green and go to those parentheses and change the negative 4 to a negative 5. I don't need to see any other work than that other than what you actually get in the calculator which, uh, excuse that, which is going to be, on this one you get negative, uh, sorry, you'll get zero. And then, like we talked about in class today, you should notice that on the other side of your vertex, you get a zero as well. So we can plot the point negative five, zero, and negative three, zero. And then plug in negative 6 in place of the what's probably negative 5 in your calculator or negative 4 depending on how far back you go into your history. And when you calculate that, you should get 3. So negative 6, 3 is a point on this parabola. And guess what? When you plug negative 2 in place of that, you'll also get 3 because parabolas are symmetrical through the vertex. In other words, this point can get reflected over here. So there is our parabola. All right, there's number one. I'm going to do number three next for fun. Actually, ooh, I'm going to do number four might play some tricks on you. So let's identify our A, B, and C. A is negative 1. That's part of the tricky part. What makes this one tricky or tough for folks is that negative right there. And it doesn't just bite us here sometimes. It bites us as we fill out the table. I'll show you how that works out. So let's do this one. Let's do it right. Let's get our vertex x value. So that's going to be the opposite of B, which is positive 8 now because b is negative 8, so opposite of that is positive, and then 2 times negative 1, 
So we get negative 4 when we simplify that. So now we make our table and negative 4 will go in the middle of our x column. Oops, <laughs> there's my x column, negative 4 will go in the middle of that. So maybe right about there. So now we substitute in negative 4 in for x. But folks, notice what's in front of the x, a negative sign. And then x gets plugged in after or negative 4 gets plugged in after that. So we need to have a negative sign outside of the parentheses representing that negative sign. Then minus 8 times negative 4, minus 12. And you should get for this, folks, 4. So right now I know that negative 4 comma 4 is the vertex. So remember our vertex x value, what we get from here, is going to be the center number that we try. So going to the left, we go negative 5, negative 6. Going to the right on our graph, we'd go negative 3, negative 2. So now we plug in negative 5 in place of this. So yes, again, there's still that minus sign out in front of the parentheses. And then here we should get, I believe we get... Three, and then because of that symmetry, when we know that negative 5 gives you a y value of negative 3, we can reflect that across the line of symmetry. So when we punch in negative 3 for x, we'll also get positive 3. And then last but not least, substitute in negative 6. And that will get you zero. So where else, what other point do I know then? That's right, reflect it across the line of symmetry, right there. So here is a rough, whoa, I missed that dot, that's okay. Here's a rough sketch of your parabola, but I have that dot there so I know what I was trying to do. Your parabola doesn't have to be perfect. Let's do number six. So A is 2, B is negative 16, C is 30. So our vertex x value is positive 16 over 2 times 2, which is 4. So that 4 is going to go in the center of our table. Then we'll go 3 and 2 and 5 and 6. So we have 2 times 4 in parentheses squared minus 16 times 4 plus 30. He. And there, when you plug that into your calculator, you'll get negative 2. So, we can plot the point for negative 2. By the way, I forgot to mention this on that last one. Well, I'll just stay with this one. Because our leading coefficient is positive, we're thinking this is going to be a opening upward parabola or a smiley face. So that vertex is the bottom of the of the half pipe at the bottom of the parabola. So let's plug in 3 in place of it. And I believe you get 0 on this. Yep. So then you also get 0 down there. And then let's plug in 2. Whoa, where's that 2 going? Right there. And right there, I'm wondering if you get 6 on this. Yippers. So you also get a 6 right there. Helps to kind of have your line of symmetry sketched in there.
Boop. Boom, it looks symmetrical. Make your parabola. Whoa, I got every point. <laughs> there we are. I was going to go back quickly to number four. Again, here we had a negative leading coefficient. So that means the parabola opens down or it's like a frowny face. And then your vertex is actually like the top of the mountain, way up there. It's the tippy top. Last one, what should we do here? How about number seven? So A is one, B is four, C is five. So the vertex x value is negative four over two times one, which is negative two. So that goes in the center of our vertex. So we get negative two squared plus four times negative two plus five. And when you do that, I think you get one. Yep. So we can plot the point, negative two, one. And because our leading coefficient is positive, this will be a smiley face. So our vertex is the bottom. So we'll be going up from there. So plug in negative 3 in place of negative 2 in this, and you will get, I believe, 2. That means you'll get a 2 down here as well. And then plug in negative 4. And you'll get a 5, I think. So plot those two points. Zoop, zing your parabola. Try to hit the points. There we are.